In this lesson for Bobcad Cam, we're going to cover the CAD portion of the software. As you can see, I have a file up on the screen, and this is the file we're going to create in this example. You can see it's a solid model. It's got some work on the top of it. It's got this little dome here uh, with some draft and radiuses, some text put on the top for engraving later, some holes for drilling with chamfers and slots and so forth, some ribs on the side of it, cut out in the back, and a through hole down the center. So a little bit of work to it, but not really too bad to do. And we're going to take you through how to create this file in the CAD portion of the software. So we're going to go ahead and open a new file to start. So we're going to go to File and New. And inside of here, if you're just working in the CAD and you're really not going to go into any of the cam trees at this time, just hit Cancel. Otherwise, choose which uh, cam tree style you're going into. So that just brings us right into the CAD portion. Now, to start out this file, we're going to start with making the main base of the model. So I'm going to go to Arc coordinates. We're going to do a center position x, y, and z at zero. We're going to do a three inch radius and the amount of circles zero to 360 being a full circle. I'll hit my fit screen. Now I'm also going to create another one at 1875 radius. But this one we're going to set over at, oh let's see, we're going to do two and a half inches in x. And okay. And these will be our two through drill holes. We'll just put another one in here at minus two and a half and OK that. You can see it's giving me a preview as I draw too to make sure everything is OK. So now we'll also do another one back at zero at 375 radius. This will be our center through hole. You can cancel the feature when you're done with it. Now I'm going to go to an isometric two view. I'm going to use layers to help keep these areas of the file organized, easy to work with, and only see what I need to at that time. Layers are in the UCS Post Manager on the Layers tab. To work with layers, you just right-click in the box. You can add new ones, show them, hide them, rename them, and delete them. I'm going to rename this one uh, Bottom Wire Frame. I'm going to right-click and I'm going to add a new one, and I'm going to call this Main Solid. Now the red check is your active drawing layer. Whichever one this is on is the one you're doing work on currently. And the black dot just allows you to turn them on and off, as you can see. So with our check on our main solid layer, we're going to go to surfaces and extrude curve. What we want to do is make this two inches thick. So I'm going to go down two inches because we're going to be drawing up for the top shape in just a moment. And I'm going to force it along the z-axis with caps. We'll close it in. I'm going to pick everything I want to extrude. And then we'll just right click and OK it. If your preview looks good, you'll go ahead and press OK again. And hit cancel. I'll fit my screen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the top. So we're going to go ahead and do this on the same layer. We're going to go to solids and cone for this. Now the top radius we're going to use for this is one inch. The bottom radius will be 1.75 and we'll make it an inch and a half tall. We'll leave it centered at 000. That's the location of the bottom center of the cone. If the preview looks good again. We'll press OK and cancel when we're done. Now I need to add that top shape to the bottom. You can see if I turn on selection mode how there are two pieces. To be able to fill it in between these two, I need it to be one piece. So to join solids, you go to solids and add. As the picture shows, you're going to always grab the main solid first. I always move off and let it select fully before I go to the next one. And then press OK. Now you can see if I turn on selection mode, I have a one piece solid. Now we're going to put some fillets in this corner and on here. So we're going to use the solid fillet option. We'll do the first one at 250. We'll just pick the edge and press OK. Now I'm going to change this to 375. Pick the top edge and press OK again. Now what we're going to do is we need to put the large center hole through here. So we're going to turn off the solid and go back to the wireframe layer. So I put my check back there so I can see that wireframe that we have there. We're going to go to surfaces and extrude curve again. Make it just some number, at least taller than the, the cone on top so it extrudes all the way through it. We'll just go six inches. We'll exaggerate. Choose the shape and press OK. And if the preview looks good, you can press OK again. Now if I turn back on the main solid, you can see it's sticking out the top of the part. I'm going to move the check back down there too, and I'm going to go to solid subtract this time because we're going to cut it out of it. 
Again, pick your main solid first, wait for it to select. If any differencing solids, wait for them to select, and then just press OK. And you can see if I fit my screen and roll it around, I have my through hole back through the top. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the slots. Let me go ahead and bring back up the, the original file so you can see here. So you can see we've made the main body with the two holes and the through hole on the cone. The next thing we have to do on the top of this is actually create these slots. Then we'll do some chamfering and text, some ribs on the side, and the cutout in the back. So we're going to come over here. We're going to right click. We're going to add a new layer, and we're just going to call this slots. I'm going to move the check to that layer. I'm going to turn off the main solid, but leave the bottom one on and go to a top view. So we're going to create the two slots in here. We're going to start with an arc coordinate. We're going to place this at 2.4375, 2 and 7 sixteenths in the X, and we're going to do a 375 radius. We'll press OK. Now that's not where the slot's going to start. We're actually going to rotate this up and create it through here that using that feature. So we're going to go to Utilities and Rotate. We're going to rotate around the z-axis. Think of each of the axes as a pole that you would be sliding, or swinging around for your rotations. I'm going to do 35 degrees at first. I'm not changing the scale. I'm not making copies. And I'm going to rotate around an existing point on the screen, in this case 0, 0, 0. I'm not actually picking it. All your features in the software that uh, when you go to do something, if you always look at the bottom corner as I'm going through here, you'll see it'll be giving me the steps of what to do next. So in this case, it's telling me to pick the entities to be rotated and then right-click OK. So I'll pick the circle and then right-click my mouse and press the OK. If the preview looks good, we'll OK it. Now this feature is going to stay in here until we turn it off. So you can see now it's trying to rotate from that new spot. So I can use this to my advantage. I actually want to rotate around now 110 degrees. So I'll just change the number and the preview looks good and I'll OK it. But if I OK it now, it's going to move my original. I want to actually turn on copy now and make one so it leaves my original in the spot and makes a new copy. So then from that position we're going to go 70 degrees more which is 35 and 35 and OK it and then we're going to go back around 110 more this way and OK it. And now we'll cancel this when we're done. So these will be the ends of our slot. Now to get the center radius we're going to create some more holes here. We're just going to use the arc coordinates for that. Except we're going to take the position out of the X and go into the Y. And OK it. And then we'll do one in the minus. So our slots are going to go through here like this and here through this following this curve. To create that, we're going to use the arc three entities option. This is looking for a start point, a pass through point, and an end point. We're going to do the tops of the three circles and then the bottom of the three circles, picking the start, the pass through, and the end. This feature works on points, lines, or arcs, or a combination of the three. And then we'll do the same on the bottom. Now what if I went across? See how it makes it, it's still passing through the middle one. So make sure you're on the right side on all your clicks. So it's a start point, must pass through the second click and end at the third click. Now we'll get rid of the areas we don't want, utilities, trim and extend quick trim, and just pick the entities you want to get rid of. I'm just left clicking on the entities and it finds the nearest intersections and breaks and deletes them out for me. All right, so we're going to go into isometric two view. And now what we need to do is create the solid and extrude those down that we're going to use the difference out of our main solid. So we're going to go to Surfaces Extrude Curve. These are 750 deep, and I'm going to go minus 750 in the Z. Now to chain select multiple entities, you hold your Shift key and left-click one of them. As long as there's no gaps or breaks in there, it'll select the entire chain for you. So Shift key and left-click. Pick both of them together and press OK. Again, if the preview looks good, we'll OK it at that point. Cancel. If you'd have had it open in here, two things would have happened. The with caps button and the extrude feature wasn't turned on, or you don't have a closed chain. So you'll want to go back and correct that. So we'll go back to the main solid layer. We'll do solid and subtract again to cut that out, and I'll pick my main solid first. 
Well, notice now I can't grab those inner ones because they're inside there kind of. It's kind of like meshing at the top. Well, there's a key on the keyboard S, which stands for shading. And if I hit that, I still have solids, but it turns the shading off so I can pick my inner shapes or my differencing ones. So you pick the main one first and then the differencing ones. I'll hit the S to turn it back on. You can see it's all, all the shadings back and everything's selected and press OK. And I'm going to save the file at this point. Come to a good point in the file. The first time maybe we'll do a file and save as. Give it a name. Choose where you want to save it and hit save. Now you can't lose it from that point. So now we're going to chamfer all these top edges. So we'll go to solids and fill it. We'll change the fillet to a chamfer and we'll make it a .031. Now we'll start with this hole here. So you just want to pick the edge. And you want to take your time selecting these and use your preview and let it select fully before you move on. And we're going to pick all the edges that we want to chamfer. There is no real fast way to do this. You just want to take your time moving around here. We'll even get this top one. And then I usually rotate over. You see how I accidentally got the bottom edge too? That's because I was trying to go too quick. And as, I was, as you move your cursor across here, you see everything flashing. It's even selecting through the back side until it gets to that point. So if you pick too quick before it actually catches up with your, where you're at and your, your graphics and everything, it'll, you, that's when you see things get picked on the back side. So if you put your cursor on an edge, let it sit for a second, and then click it, you should be okay. And it will just okay it. And there's all my little chamfers on there. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and uh, create the uh, ribs in the side of this. So let's go ahead and bring back the original file. So you can see the ribs that we're going to create here. One, two, three of them. All right, so we're going to go back to the file we're working on. We're going to stay on the main solid. We're going to go to solids and torus. Now the major radius is the overall radius of the whole piece. It kind of looks like a donut. So we're going to say three inches, which is our overall of our part. The minor radius is the radius of the tube. We're going to be 150. Oop, not an inch and a half, 0.15. You can see the preview, what it shows you on that. And where we're going to position is X and Y will be zero, but the first one will be down at, uh, let's do 875. There we go. And we'll OK it. We'll do another one at minus an inch and a quarter. And another one at minus 1.625. And cancel. That's what we're going to difference out of there again. Remember, we're going to cut them out, so we're going to go to Solid Subtract, pick the main one first, and the three differencing ones, and press OK. You can see it cuts those ribs right out of the side of the part. So I'm going to save it at that point. Just come up and hit Save now, so I can't lose it from that point on. Now we're going to do the, the text at the top. So... What we'll do now is we'll actually come down here, add a new layer, call this text, move the check onto that one. And what I need is we're going to write the text in here. So I want the wireframe to be able to bend that to and line up where I want it to go. So to do that, we're going to use ex uh, utilities, extract edges from a single surface. And by picking the surface and then right clicking and OKing it, when I turn off everything else, you'll see I have the edges as lines and arcs, or in this case just arcs, of where we're going to be working. So that's all I need. So now we're going to go to the text, create some text. We're going to use the Bobcad font folder and choose the Bobcad default font for this, just a simple single line engraving font. We're going to type in 727-489-0003. And for those of you that catch that, that's the uh, technical support phone number. We're going to make our letters quarter inch tall. And we're actually going to add in some extra spacing of 50 thousandths. And press OK. You can see there's my preview. Now what's neat about when you're in the text, if I come back and make any changes to this and want to see it, I just press OK while I'm in preview. And you see everything updates, as you can see. So get it all worked out in the green preview before you actually place it. We'll just stick it down below here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bend it inside this area here. So we're going to cancel that. We're going to go to text and fit text to curve. We're going to center it. We're going to space it from the bottom 
We're going to do it around this line from the bottom of the line or from the line to the bottom of the letter. We'll space 50 thousandths. The bottom it says pick the unvectorized text to fit to pass. That means we haven't exploded it to lines and arcs. We're going to choose that and then we're going to right click and OK it. That locks in the selection. Now it says pick to start and then shift click the end. And you can see it places my text right in there. I'll cancel that. Now if I go to an isometric 2 view, you can see the text was created at 0 because that's what it does. It creates it at Z0. So we need to get it up to that level. We're going to use utilities and translate. Do an inch and a half in Z, delta, which is just a positive or negative distance in an axis. At the bottom it says pick the entities to translate and then right click OK. Then we'll just press the OK button. It says select options, enter values, and click the OK button. We've already set the options and values, so we'll press OK and cancel. So if I was to turn on my main solid now, you can it's kind of hard to see the text. So let's go ahead and select the entire model with a click. Right click your mouse and go to modify attributes. This is the properties of what's selected, the color, the line style, the layer it's on, and so forth. So we're going to change the color to darken this up. So now you can really see the text of where we would be doing the engraving on the top. Last thing we got to do is put a cut in the bottom of this. Very easy to do. We're going to add a new layer. We're going to call it a uh, bottom cutout. And we're going to move the check to that and turn everything else off. Go back to a top view. We're going to create another arc at coordinate 0, 0, 0. And it's going to be 2.8, almost the, the full radius of the part. We'll go to an isometric 2 view. And we're going to extrude this. Uh, we'll do, let's do minus 1.75. Pick the circle and OK it. Preview looks good. We'll go ahead and OK that and cancel it. Now we need to move this down and get it in position. So we're going to go to Utilities and Translate. And we're just going to move it down one inch. Select it, right click OK it, like it said at the bottom, and then press the OK button. Cancel it when you're done. So if I turn on the main solid now and put my check back there, you can see it's sticking out the bottom. And if I hit T for transparency, um, that just toggles the model see-through or not, pretty much, on your keyboard. Nice to be able to see where that model is actually sitting in there, and it's going to intersect and cut. You can see there's a little bit of space between the bottom of our slots and the top of our cutout in the back. So we're going to do the solid subtract, pick the main one, let it select, pick the differencing ones, let them select, and press OK, and cancel. And there's my cutout in the back. So now all we have to do is turn back on our text to see that on top, and that could be your complete file. So I'll go ahead and save it at this point. So not too hard to do, a uh, combination of a few different features. Uh, this part can be turned on the lathe and then finished milled uh, uh, secondary work on the mill, or the whole thing can be cut on the mill if you wanted. Uh, so it's a good part to, to go in and draw. It covers a lot of features. This concludes this lesson.